our world and beyond. Space, in partnership with the European Space Agency. In space, as elsewhere, a form of propulsion is necessary for movement. What has changed the conditions of entry into space is the introduction of space propulsion. It's based on a simple principle, that of action and reaction. The cosmic billiard is a sequence of planetary swing-bys, gravity assist maneuvers or planetary flybys. But let's begin at the beginning. Chemical propulsion is, essentially, an explosion from the release of gas inside a combustion chamber. It's released via an outlet, which causes an action and a reaction. Discovered by the Chinese in the 9th century, gunpowder was for a long time the only chemical propellant and still has a role when a short and powerful thrust is needed. However, in space, power needs to be controlled and precise. For a launch, tons and tons of thrust is needed. The propellants used are known as cryogenic fuels. Usually, oxygen and hydrogen cooled to very low temperatures until they liquefy. Once combined, they produce an exothermal response, and from that we get the required thrust. This is the propulsion test room of ESTEC, the Centre for Space Technology of the European Space Agency. Here, tests are underway on a new generation of propellants which are classified as motor electric propulsion, the mode used to propel the European lunar satellite, SMART-1. SMART-1 was powered by a plasma engine, an electric motor providing a thrust of 5 grams. 5 grams is 2 ants walking on a sheet of paper or a soft breath on the palm of my hand. It's incredible to imagine that with this puff, a satellite of 350 kilos, like Smart 1, was able to go from Earth's orbit to the Moon and remain in lunar orbit for several months to complete its scientific mission. How can so little thrust power such a journey? Chemical propulsion engines have a strong but short thrust. The spacecraft continues on its constant speed, while the electric motor drives non-stop in the vacuum of space and the craft accelerates continuously. I can show you the same type of engine. Follow me. Xenon, a light gas, is used as fuel. Smart One is carrying 80 kilos in its tank. The xenon, which enters the engine via an electrostatic process, turns into plasma. Power supplied by solar panels separates the ions and electrons, and xenon ions are accelerated by an electric arc. This gives a slight push, known as plasma. Earth observation satellites or those used in deeper exploration are more and more using electric propulsion. It allows the correction of plate telecommunication satellites in geostationary orbit. The Sun's energy is absent during long missions and nuclear power takes over in the form of radionuclides, the radioisotopes. This is a form of nuclear propulsion. A very simple form of nuclear propulsion is the radioisotope. A source of energy like radioisotope coupled with a fluid like hydrogen, which is warmed by heat from a nuclear reactor, will accelerate and be released as in chemical propulsion. The concept exists. What is crucial when we talk about nuclear propulsion in space is to make it lighter, to fly on a satellite and to make it safe. Other applications already used on Earth will soon be implemented in space. The concept of a solar sail is similar to the one we use on boats. 
Wind in space comes from solar photonic radiation or from another body bright enough to provide propulsion. But the technological challenges are yet to be resolved. We have to use very light materials capable of withstanding a number of attacks from micrometeorites that can damage the sail or even solar radiation itself may damage the structure of the sail. Solutions are being sought to create large wings with telescopic extensions which are light and strong to ensure the structure is rigid. GeoSail is the project and ESA are working on this new form of propulsion. The energy of motion, which everything has, is transformed into an extraordinary form of energy in space. If a spacecraft is approaching a planet in the direction of its way around the Sun, the spacecraft takes a little bit of the kinetic energy of the planet and it's being accelerated. At the Space Operations Center of ESA in Darmstadt, Germany, we can see the use of this type of propulsion. It's cheap, but highly complex. It requires a mastery of celestial mechanics. Despite that, its use has become routine. Thinking about this idea of space billiard, you have to calculate when the spacecraft is passing with which planet, at which time, and how this can be optimized. Yeah? And for that you need a lot of experience to set up a very complex trajectory that finally brings you on your target trajectory. Calculation after calculation, that's the order of the day for the flight dynamics team in Darmstadt. Routes for distant missions are calculated and continuously monitored. For corrections on the way, the team use onboard thrusters or small chemical or electric thrusters. If we are approaching the planet too close, the spacecraft might be attracted by the planet and might hit the planet. Yeah? If, we are, if the distance to the planet is too large, the effect of the gravity swing by is only very little. So there is one optimum distance to pass a planet where we have maximum effect of this, we call it also a slingshot maneuver. We have the first encounter with a planet, the spacecraft is being accelerated, it gains orbital velocity, it can go further out in the solar system where it might reach the next planet. Yeah? And the next planet takes the spacecraft again, pushes it a little bit, yeah? so it reaches more orbital velocity. It can go even further out, reaching the next encounter, and so on, until we have reached the final, we call it delta V, yeah? the final velocity change to reach its target. The prime example of gravitational assistance propulsion is Rosetta, the European space probe. It was launched in 2004 and even after suffering the effects of three orbits around the Earth and around Mars, the craft will be picked up by the orbit of its destination, the comet churumov gerasimenko ETA 2014, after a mere 5 billion kilometers. A never-ending journey. <laughs>